Richard Wilbur, whose meticulous, urbane poems earned him two Pulitzer Prizes and selection as the National Poet Laureate, died on Saturday in Belmont, Mass. He was 96. His son Christopher confirmed his death in a nursing home. Across more than 60 years as an acclaimed American poet, Mr. Wilbur followed a muse who prized traditional virtuosity over self-dramatization. As a consequence he often found himself out of favor with the literary authorities who preferred the heat of artists like Sylvia Plath and Allen Ginsberg. He received his first Pulitzer in 1957, and a National Book Award as well, for Things of This World. The collection included a Baroque wall fountain in the Villa Sierra, which the poet and critic Randall Jarrell called one of the most marvelously beautiful, one of the most nearly perfect poems any American has written. By the early 1960s, however, critical opinion generally conformed to Mr. Jarrell's oft-quoted assessment that Mr. Wilbur never goes too far, but he never goes far enough. Typical of complaints in this vein was a review by Herbert Lebowitz of Mr. Wilbur's collection The Mind Reader in the New York Times of June 13, 1976, while we acknowledge his erudition and urbanity, we regretfully liken his mildness to the amiable normality of the bourgeois citizen. But there were many on the other side who objected to the notion that Mr. Wilbur's poems were somehow unimportant because they were pretty. Jack Butler, for example, a resident of Okalona, Arkansas, wrote a letter to the editor in response to Mr. Lebowitz's review, remarking, Sirs, the man has had a feast set before him, the very best, and complains because it is not a peanut butter and ketchup sandwich. Mr. Wilbur sailed on regardless of which way the wind blew. He won a second Pulitzer in 1988 for new and collected poems, became the second poet laureate of the United States, succeeding Robert Penn Warren in 1987-88, and won many other awards over the years, including the $100,000 Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize in 2006, when he was 85. In all, he produced nine volumes of poems and several children's books, which he himself illustrated. He was also an esteemed translator of poems and other works from the French, Spanish, and Russian, including the plays of Moliere and Racine. Frank Rich, then the Times' chief theater critic, wrote in 1982 that Wilbur's adaptations of Moliere comedies like Tardif, The Misanthrope and The School for Wives were beautiful works of art in themselves. Mr. Wilbur's lighter-than-air verse upholds the idiom and letter of Moliere, yet it also satisfies the demands of the stage. Mr. Wilbur wrote lyrics for opera and musical theater productions too. Among them, Leonard Bernstein's Candide. Mr. Wilbur served three bloody years as a combat soldier in Europe in World War II, an experience that some critics thought might be a clue to the orderly, generally optimistic nature of his work. Perhaps the utter disparity between what he saw and what he wished to see made him run for cover, the poet and scholar John Riebertens wrote. Mr. Wilbur dismissed this explanation.